Hello everyone, in this video I want to give you a brief overview again of how to write an excellent answer in the letter section of the Liebenswert Higher Level German paper. As you know, it's worth 50 marks, that's about 12.5% of your overall German mark. Uh, it's the last question in the paper, it's the last question that you'll likely do and it is important to do it really really well. Uh, you'll have about 40 minutes or so to answer this question uh, depending on how much time you give yourself and this year there is a slight change with just four out of five paragraphs having to be answered but I would go ahead and answer all five anyway just to give yourself the best chance. In this video I'll first of all give you my advice on how to approach the, the letter from the start. Uh, secondly, we look at how to write a very good introduction and conclusion. Then we look at a sample answer to the 2019 letter question. And finally, we'll have a look at some common pitfalls. So let's jump straight into it. So the first piece of advice I give when you approach the letter is just to take a minute and think of the phrase TNT. I would say, first of all, think about the themes in each paragraph, then number each question very carefully. And finally, Think about the tenses. Are there any special tenses that are coming up in the questions? And as a very last thing, maybe just think of pluses. Where could I make a really nice statement or a really nice point along the way? Now you can do all this as you go along, but I do advise doing it right from the start. So let's take a look uh, at this uh, 2019 um, letter. We see in the first paragraph that the question is really about the 18th birthday. So you could just, for example, on the left hand side, just write in here uh, 18th or 18th birthday. When you come down to the next line, uh, you see here that it's about fitness. So again, we could just do a little dash and this paragraph is about fitness. Uh, when you come down again, uh, ich habe mir am Wochenende im Secondhand Laden eine Jacke gekauft. So this is really about the topic of secondhand or secondhand items. And finally, when you come to the last paragraph, it's about parents and Eltern and stress and so on. So that's our, our themes laid out there. Secondly, I would say just very carefully read the, the, the letter and number each question. So the reason that's important is obviously you need to answer every single question. So when we look here, the first question is, Was ändert sich bei euch in Irland, wenn man 18 wird? That's the first question. Second, was macht man als erstes? Three, uh, wie feierst du am liebsten Geburtstag? Und dann, wie war das beste Geschenk, das du je bekommen hast? And go down through each paragraph and do that for each question coming after that. So, wie ist das in Irland? Wie hältst du dich fit? Uh, number three, was tust du, wenn dich etwas ärgert? Und vier, und was macht dich glücklich? Hier, was findest du besser? Uh, zwei, schreib mir bitte. Drei, was würdest du noch sagen, nein, kaufen? Und vier, und was ganz sicher nicht? And finally, haben sie recht? Warum meinst du das? Uh, wie reagieren deine Eltern und was hast du um, letztes Wochenende gemacht? So that's our numbering. So themes first, then numbers, and finally tenses. Uh, it's very important to know exactly what tense you're answering a question in. And this is particularly important when it comes to the past tense and the conditional tense. Uh, are there any questions here in the past and the conditional? Well, if you look at the fourth question in the first paragraph, it does say, was war das beste Geschenk, das du je bekommen hast? That question is in the past tense and it's advise well i tell students to put a p in the left hand margin to remind yourself to answer that question in the past tense you might think you remember but you'd be surprised at how many students know it's in the past tense but go ahead and answer it in the present tense uh, coming down here uh, when you look at the third paragraph was wurdest du noch second hand kaufen uh, that is a question in the conditional tense so you could just write a c in the left hand margin here and coming then down to the last question again uh, was hast du letztes Wochenende gemacht? That is a question in the past tense. Now, finally, you could just think as well, are there any, what I call plus points? Are there any little phrases that I've learned that will help me, that I can slot in here under any of these themes? Maybe little phrases you've learned already that you really like. And on that note, I have a set of five sheets on my website, handouts.ie, that really uh, has a list of these. The, the first sheet is on familia and there are lots of just little phrases, little handy turns of phrase that you could slot in underneath one of these themes and, themes, and I would highly, highly recommend that you do that. So moving on then to the introduction and conclusion. So what I've done in this, for this class, I've already written it and I'll just go through it really quickly and you can pause and, um, and look at this as you see fit. So, um, the first tip I'll give is don't uh, copy anything from the letter itself. Have your own uh, introduction and conclusion written off. You don't get many marks for it. You get 
two marks or so I think for the introduction and two marks or so for the conclusion but just have it right it's it's very impressive to an examiner if your introduction and your conclusion are perfect right from the start so looking at this uh, you want to put your place here the date of the exam which uh, this year is on the uh, in Mai uh, and then just when you come down here, Libra Sven, make sure the first letter is small. It doesn't, it's not hugely important, but it's not supposed to be capital. Libra Sven, wie geht's? Ich bin fit wie ein Turnschuh. Now, that's a little bit, uh, it's just a little phrase means I'm fit as a fiddle. Uh, vielen Dank für deinen Brief, der gestern angekommen ist. Es war schön, von dir zu hören, jetzt zu deinen Fragen. So it was lovely to hear from you now to your questions. Just something short like that. It doesn't even need to be that long. You do need two sentences in it. So that's an example of a good introduction. Jumping on down then to the conclusion rather than looking at it at the end. This is uh, perhaps even a little bit nicer. I've got one of these little phrases here. Jetzt muss ich in den sauren Apfel beißen und für meine letzte Prüfung lernen. This means now I have to uh, get going. Uh, it literally means bite the sour apple, bite the bullet, and uh, study for my last exam. Schreib all wieder, write back soon. Mein Briefkasten for hungert, that means my letterbox is hungry. Just two nice little phrases might bring in a smile to an examiner's face. And then when you come down here, make sure the dine is down a line and there's a comma, and then put your name at the end. You can put your first name right at the bottom of the letter. Jumping straight then into uh, sample answers uh, to each of these paragraphs, I will make some points as we go along that hopefully will be useful to you. So the first paragraph, as we said, was about uh, the 18th birthday. And the first question in that paragraph was something like, Was darf man mit 18 Jahren, oh, was, was ändert sich bei euch in Irland, wenn man 18 wird? Und was macht man als erstes, wenn man 18 ist? The first question was, what changes with you in Ireland when, man is, when one is 18? And what does one do first uh, when one is 18? And it was important that you answered both of those questions. So you do get content marks for just trying the questions. So always try and answer each specific question and you have the best chance of getting a content mark even if your German isn't brilliant. So what I've said here is mit 18 Jahren darf man, and that's a modal verb, in Ireland wählen. So one can vote in Ireland. Man kann auch einen Führerschein bekommen. So one can also get a driving license. Again, we have a modal verb the first verb here and the infinitive at the end. Be careful with that. So we've answered two sentences. Give two sentences of an answer to one question, which is always a wise thing to do. I'll explain why in just a moment. Als erstes, first of all, hat man eine kleine Party, wenn man 18 ist. So again, we're answering the question about what do you do when you're 18. Then the, the third question, I believe, was what, how do you like to celebrate your birthday? So we've answered, ich feiere am liebsten Geburtstag mit meiner Familie. Es gibt in unserer Stadt ein italienisches Restaurant und das Essen dort ist lecker. Now these are simple sentences uh, that, that really anybody can attempt. There is in our town an Italian restaurant and the food there is delicious. Uh, and then you've said, meine Geschwister sind großzügig, which means they are generous and ich bekomme immer viele Geschenke. And it is again helpful just to say whatever you can say in answer to a question. Now the last question was in the past tense so again let's remind ourselves of that by putting a little p in the margin here. Das beste Geschenk that you, you're going to answer and say das beste Geschenk das ich je bekommen habe war meinen Hund Joey. So the best present that I ever got was my dog Joey and you're answering in the past tense which is really important. Er ist so süß und er ist and ist immer für mich da. Now I'm not going to mark this whole letter but I will just show you how this First paragraph, what would be important here is you get a content mark for answering that a question. So we just say that that's one line. Then you would also get a mark for saying uh, what man does, one does uh, first, and also how you celebrate with your family. And then you would have got a mark for the best present you had. And anything after that, throughout the letter, there are discretionary marks, which are basically just five marks, that's all throughout the whole letter, not five marks per paragraph, five throughout the whole letter, that you will get for making, writing a sentence, a relevant sentence in answer to a question. And it's always good to aim to find or get these discretionary marks as soon as you can. So here, for example, you would have got one here. One can get a driver's license. You'd also have got one, there is an Italian restaurant in our uh, town, das Essen dort ist lecker, you'd have got another one there. My, my siblings are generous, you'd have got another one there. I get many presents, you've got another one there. We can't get one from the next line because it's already been used as a point to answer a question. But the last one here, he is so sweet and is always there for me. In fact, you might have got two there. 
So looking at this paragraph, you not only have got your, um, let's just scroll this up and down a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. So you not only have got your four marks for answering the questions, but you've also picked up one, two, three, four, five, six. So one of those one counts, so we'll have to bracket them. You can only, you're, you're capped at six or at five. You've also picked up your, uh, your five discretionary marks straight away. And not that you won't try in the rest of the letter to give extra points, but it's just great to think you've picked up those five content marks right away at the start. Moving on then to the second question about fitness. You said fitness in Ireland is auch sehr beliebt. So you've answered the question, is it popular? And you've added an extra point. Es gibt fitness studios überall in den Großstädten. And be very careful in German that you say, uh, that you say, es gibt. Uh, it's not der ist. There's no other way of saying it's just es gibt. Uh, how do you keep fit? Ich jogge dreimal pro Woche. Es gibt viele Wanderwege in meinem Wohnort, das gefällt mir. And that's a lovely little phrase just to throw in. Uh, examiners will be looking for those kind of little phrases and put a plus in the margin. Maybe it's, it is simple, but it, you might not get a plus for it. But that, I like that, you're really saying. Now, the third question here, what annoys you? This was a difficult question and it was difficult to answer it grammatically correct. Here we just say, wenn mich etwas ärgert, gehe ich mit meinem Hund Joey Gassi. So I go for a walk with my Hund Joey, who you've already mentioned. And you're throwing in here as well, uh, or then, sorry, another question then following that was, what makes you happy? You've said, Van Dern, which is hiking, die frische Luft und die freie Natur machen mich immer glücklich und helfen mir die Seele baumeln zu lassen, which means help me to, uh, to, to relax. Uh, so again, you've just given a very nice answer to that question and you've had a few extra points along the way. Moving on then to the third paragraph. Uh, this was on the topic of second-hand clothes. Ich finde second-hand Klamotten besser. You said, man kann viele Schnäppchen, which is bargains, finden. Uh, und es gibt viele gebrauchtwaren Läden here in Athlone. So you said there are many second-hand shops here. Trotzdem, nevertheless, I like to dress up. And here is a, a nice thing to have in German is just a couple of these little proverbs if you're at the top of your game uh, that you can throw in. And this one is just clothes clothes make it the man in that sense so Kleider machen Leute lovely little phrase to throw in here um, that shows that you've had a little bit of extra reading or you've found some of these little phrases das Sprichwort is like a proverb or a phrase now I've just put in brackets here if you're an ordinary level student or if you're a student who's just trying to get the best mark you can in higher level uh, this is a, an equally valid answer that you could give you could just say ich finde neue Kleidung besser so that's just a simple way of saying I find new clothes better the quality is good, you get a mark for that. Neue Klamotten sind in Penny sehr billig. Again, you get a mark for that. So those type of answers are, are perfect. Uh, they, do not, they don't show the greatest amount of expression, but they're totally acceptable and they're grammatically excellent. Now, what would you still buy uh, secondhand? And this is where we have our conditional tense. So, ik wurde bestimmt Möbel secondhand kaufen. So I would certainly buy furniture secondhand as it's oft sehr billig. Uh, you also say then, answer the next question of what you wouldn't buy. Ich würde einen Laptop nie secondhand kaufen. I would never buy a laptop secondhand. So again, the verb infinitive at the end. Dann eine Garantie gibt es nicht. And then just a little funny phrase, if you knew this phrase, das ist nicht gerade das Gelbe vom Ei, is just a little phrase which means that's not exactly brilliant. Again, the type of phrase you might get a plus in the left-hand margin for. Moving on then to the uh, fourth and final paragraph here. This is on the topic of Eltern. So, Miele's Eltern haben bestimmt recht. Very important here that you've answered the question, you've said they are right. Be very careful of not answering a question. If you're asked, are they right? Is this a good idea? How do you find that? Make sure you answer. Zwei Uhr ist viel zu spät und auch sehr gefährlich. Very dangerous. Das, meine Eltern, then you're answering the question again in the conditional tense. Meine Eltern würden sich Sorgen machen. Now you didn't necessarily have to answer this question in the conditional tense. It was very nice if you did. My parents would be worried. Das wurde, uh, das wird, sorry, that will never happen. Denn ich bin das Nesthächtchen. That will never happen because I am the... Um, the, the, the child that stays at home. I can't think of the exact phrase for it. Uh, the, the house pet sort of thing, the pet of the family. Then the question in the answering in the past tense. Letztes Wochenende war ich mit meinem Bruder auf der Insel Ackel. So again, you said I was on the island. You don't say I am on it now. Wir haben Fahrräder gemietet. We uh, rented bikes and we explored the island on the Insel erkundet. And all of this you're answering in the past tense. So just have something that you did uh, last weekend. Es hat so viel Spaß gemacht, a lovely little phrase, just to throw in at the end. 
So that brings us to the end of this uh, sample answer. And again, just then a couple of points on what you might avoid. I would say uh, don't make any mistakes, especially on the introduction, the conclusion, which I have up here now on screen again, and the date. Just don't make any mistakes there because it does show a type of carelessness which you want to avoid. Uh, secondly, I would say don't copy their letter. Don't copy the ending from their letter. Just learn it off, obviously. Uh, thirdly, I would say don't ask questions. Uh, if you want to show a bit of creativity on your part, don't be asking the other uh, questions in your letter. Instead, uh, put down little phrases, little Sprichwort, a little rate of Wendung, and like I've shown you here, that will get you maybe a plus uh, in the margin. And finally, I would say just make sure you read back over your letter at the end uh, if you have time. I'll just give you some examples of what could go wrong. So you might, for example, have, let's say, the verb in the wrong place. Let's say you said here, uh, something like um, letztes Wochenende ich war mit meinem Bruder after Insel Ackel. What would happen in a case like that is that uh, the red pen will come out and there'll be two lines underneath it and you'd be getting a word order uh, a little WO over in the side showing that the word order was incorrect. Uh, you don't want that to happen. Just also be careful I would say with uh, things like capital letters um, check your tenses uh, check your word order uh, make sure you've answered every question. Just go back over all of those things again and uh, that will give you a chance of getting your absolute best mark. All the best in the exam. Also, if you have any questions in the letter, pop them into the chat below. Give it your best shot. It's the last question and you'll do very, very well, I'm sure. Fiel Spaß.